Well here I have the shutter assembly uh, complete, ready to be stripped down. So we begin the process. First I'll remove the front group, hold down the button, turn it anti-clockwise till it unlatches and lift out the lens. Pop that to one side where it won't get damaged. That's got a UV filter on the front of it, so it's, as long as nothing awful happens to the back, it's, it'll be good. At the back. Mm. Oh, let's start from the front. Three small screws. Chrome brass, easily marked on that front ring. That's the uh, that's actually where the hood would bone it. Those three bone it spots there, tabs. There where a lens hood would bone it onto there. Not the lens, the lens bone it's onto this black piece on the inside. Lift these rings off. The two top the two rings here come off together. They um, they're sort of interleaved almost. Lift off this piece. We can lift off this piece from underneath. Here you can see it's quite dirty and dusty around there. That's uh, a bit unusual to see that amount of dirt there. Find the appropriate screwdriver. I'll lift off this black ring at the front. There are four countersunk or flathead screws, quite short, that hold this to the uh, ring below it. That's a little bit tight, that one. That should come off. This has a locating pin on it. It only goes in one position. This piece here, interestingly, you'll see that there's a rust mark on it there. That's where it comes up against the arm at that point. So it means there's a little splash of moisture has got in there at some stage. This outer ring here is held in with four screws and they're deep down into the cavity here. So we'll just loosen those up. There's our four screws. Again, this piece has an alignment mark here, which fits over a pin, so it can only go back in one place. So now we're pretty much stripped down from the front as far as getting to the main case goes. From the rear of the shutter, we've got four screws visible there. Nickel plated screws, pan head. Yeah. 
We can lift this off. And this is our front part of our focus mount for all practical purposes. Pop that to one side. This little piece here, this is for cocking the shutter. And that's just sitting there loose. That can come off. Now the rear group, that's quite dirty looking. I want to get that off. Yeah, I can get that off with my fingers. Often that's on very tight. You need to use a, a friction tool or something to get that off. In that case that came off quite well. At the back of the shutter, because we still have our shutter case inside this outer case here. This is held in with a retaining ring at the back. Basically it does the same job as the retaining rings on any of the uh, rangefinder cameras. Before I go any further, I'm just going to remove this speed cam ring from the front of the camera. And the reason I'm doing that is it has this tab at the front which engages with the setting rings. And since I'm going to be doing a lot of pulling and pushing to get this thing apart at the back, inevitably I'll end up applying some pressure to that and I don't want to bend that tab and damage it. So I'll take that off for the moment, I'll just pop that ring back in place to stop it falling to bits and then looking at the rear of the shutter. This retaining ring is often very difficult to get apart, it's often very very tight in there. I'm going to try it dry to start off with because I suspect this camera has been dealt with before and it may not be as tight as it would have been fresh from the factory. So I'll try a tool on there, see if it'll unscrew. Hopefully it will without any fights. And then after that I'll gear up for the fight as required. I'll start here with this spanner wrench. Make sure that's correctly engaged. Oh, there's no danger that's moving. So, more tools, more work. Well, you can see I've got a large spanner engaged on the outer casing. I'm just going to put a touch of solvent around that screw, around that retaining ring. I don't believe it's lacquered in place, but for some reason they bind in and they will not move. And I'm using a spanner, a lens spanner that I made. A long time ago. That's not turning. Sometimes these rings have to be sacrificed. Sometimes they will just not come loose. I'm going to have to uh, apply another tool to that I'd say. Back when I've made my decision. Okay, I'm back. I did get it loose. And what I got it loose with was is this. This is a piece of uh, fairly tough steel that I've reduced to a narrow edge here enough to engage the width of the slots in the ring. I've cut two small grooves here and here which allow it to drop over the aluminium edge of that um, shutter body and that allows these two tabs to drop into the retainer ring. Basically what I did was I clamped this into the vise so I had just this piece stacking up, engaged the retainer ring on that tool and then used my spanner to rotate it and the ring came off 
straight away, nice and easy. So, that's how I managed to get that off in one piece this time around. I'm very pleased about that because they are, as I say, it wouldn't come loose with my normal tools. Um, it was just much too tight. This is only something you strike with this particular model. I've got no idea why they should be so tight. Once it's broken free, it can be spun off with any normal tool. And there's nothing to show for it. There's no obvious lacquer or anything else there. It just binds on and will not turn off. Anyway, it's off now, so that's all the, the fighting over. We can rotate, pull out the inner case. The XM V lever. You sort of rotate the shutter to get that round there. And we lift out the flash contact at the back. And there's our case, the outer case. As usual, it's a little bit of dust and dirt in there. Nothing too dramatic. That should be easy enough to clean. And we're down to the shutter itself. The rear of the shutter, because it's a... Uh, because it's a reflex shutter, it has two arrangements here with springs. One is to close the shutter down um, after it's been opened for viewing. And the other one likewise does the diaphragm. So I'm just going to remove the springs. And just check the action of those two things. The shutter is extremely stiff. It hardly wants to move at all. So the shutter's no good. The diaphragm setting, that's this one here. Again, that's stiff. It's not a, it's nowhere near as bad as the shutter. Um, but it's stiff to the extent that I can just tell it would not snap the diaphragm down to the set aperture if you were firing the shutter, particularly at one of the higher speeds. So that's good. We've got the, the shutter out of its case. I've got the return springs for those two actions off. I can remove the front retainer ring. We already have the speed cam off. I can remove the main cocking ring there. Remove that latch. And see what we're left with. Remove that little pinion that uh, cocks the shutter. Remove the main drive spring for the shutter. Now I'm interested in seeing this because I believe it's probably tired and doesn't pr produce the required uh, force any longer in order to shut those, work the shutter. And that would appear to be the case. I have to find a better example. Right, back on the uh, all-purpose block of wood. And I'll start stripping this down. So first I'll lift that spring off from behind that arm so that it's not under tension and therefore does not go flinging across the room to be lost forever. I'll just bring a container here so that I can put those loose parts in it. The flash contact. I can remove the shutter release arm. If I've got my needle nose pliers, I can remove the spring, the setting spring here from the flash sink. Works. Remove that sector, remove that little gear. 
take out the two screws from the retard gear train lift that off entire the single screw for the delay action or self timer I'll take this screw off, it holds the bracket for the main drive spring, I'll remove that, that'll allow me to lift the main cam here, drive cam off. I want to remove this spring and I'll put a toothpick over the shaft while I was unhooking the spring so that the spring could not ping off into the distance because they're very small and they're very prone to buggering off I want to remove this screw that's a uh, post with a little notch either side I've got a suitably modified screwdriver here somewhere that one which is basically just a screwdriver fine down and then with the centre notched away with a dremel you could do the same with a file if the screwdriver wasn't too hard so I'll unscrew that post and it's spring remove the B lever and then there's the B lever return spring here which I'll also remove. I removed the return spring for the B lever from the shutter. We've finished the, with the front of the shutter for the moment. I can turn my attention for the, to the rear of the shutter. We have three screws hold the aperture settings ring on the back. Two of them are identical they're fine flat headed screws the third one is not it doesn't look the same that serves as a post for one of those return springs to hook up to we can lift off that lever and I can lift off this lever this lever sets the self timer and the flash sync speeds and I'm just going to check that diaphragm again to see if it still feels much the same, and it does. Sometimes the stiffness in that setting can be on that setting lever here. Sometimes that can have grease or something under it making the setting stiff. And I'm checking the shutter setting, and the shutter is, is absolutely sticky. So I've got three screws around the outside. These three black screws hold the outer cut, the inner case here, and the mechanism plate together. So we'll remove those. I'll just pop this over here. No point having it over on the other side. I'll lift off the case. So here's the inner shutter case with the diaphragm blades and all that assembly complete. We'll need to strip that apart and clean it. Here I'm looking at the shutter. I'm looking at the state of the blades. And that's what my most main concern here. To see if they're oily. And they don't look particularly oily. There are marks on them. But this plate that they're mounted on that swings them in and out, that certainly doesn't move as smoothly as I'd expect. And here, I can probably see why. There's some oily patches right here. Let's just tip those blades off there. And it looks like there's a bit of stickiness on the back. 
and certainly this surface doesn't look as smooth as I would reasonably expect it to be. It's like there's been some slight corrosion there. It's almost like a, a pattern from condensation droplets or something. I'm checking the action of this arm here. This is our uh, blade actuating ring. I was checking if it moves freely. It does, it's a bit stiffer than I would normally expect, but it does move reasonably freely. We'll pop that to one, to one side and start work, I think, with the diaphragm. I'll pop my shutter blades away over there. And let's start here. So this component, we have three countersunk head screws or flathead screws. They're quite small. These screws are all uh, abnormally tight. It's quite common for screws to be looser than this. Particularly when the screws are very tight you have to be extra vigilant with your screwdriver to keep plenty of downward pressure so that your screwdriver does not come out of the screws and mutilate the head or sometimes worse still slip and damage some component so I lift that plate off I'm looking at the state of that that looks quite clean um, it'll probably wipe even cleaner as we clean it but it certainly doesn't look bad this is the ring that it does the settings as it's swung backwards or forwards. The pins in the blades are forced up or down those guides and therefore swing the blades in or out. The blades look good. There's some little marks on those blades but those marks are from me spraying solvent into the retaining ring at the back of the camera when I was taking it apart. There's a bit of an oily look to those blades regardless and they'll certainly benefit from being cleaned but they certainly don't look bad. So, some cleaning. Cotton buds and naphtha or cigarette lighter fluid is the order of the day and the first thing I want to do is clean this outer case of any dirt, contaminants, oil or grease And you can see there's a bit of it there. Though not all of that is what shouldn't have been there. One of those components did require a little bit of lubricant. And I'll clean the outside of the case. And the outside of the case is equally important to have it clean and free from old grease because the outside of the case is where those are checked actuating rings for the aperture and the shutter run and, and they must not be sticky or they won't work right so I'm cleaning all these surfaces the inside and outside thread at the rear of the case the inside edge is where the lens screws into it the outside thread of course is where the retaining ring screws on but that case is looking quite clean. It's, um, it's no problem with that. So I'll pop that to one side. Let's deal with these two plates. This looks to be in very good condition. Uh, there's no corrosion marks on it. And uh, minimal surface oily sheen sometimes these components will show corrosion marks typically when they show corrosion marks they're very often in a fingerprint pattern and it will be from people handling the components not by the edges as I am here but just grabbing the middle of the component 
and just their skin oils and perspiration is enough to etch into those components. Now that I've cleaned it, I can see that that's exactly what we're seeing here. That there are fingerprints here and here. Now that may have happened at any stage in the life of the camera while it was apart. The shutter, of course, is a product of the decal factory. Um, Kodak didn't assemble shutters. And those marks could be, have been there from someone handling those components with their bare fingers in the factory when the shutter was new. And equally, they could be there because a repairer at some stage when they've had the camera apart has handled those components with their bare hands and left the fingerprints on there. If I was extra fastidious I suppose I'd be using gloves or um, finger cots as you would do watchmaking and I think that would be gilding the lily a bit, you don't need to go to those extremes. So I'm checking this component, I'm holding it against the light, you can see it reflecting the light there, that allows me to see the markings that are on it and uh, judge what those markings might mean. There's always staining on things like this. Now the staining can be uh, something really is on the surface, something that will come off, like uh, if you get a solvent it might remove that, it might be some sort of staining from um, oil or something of that nature and it'll come off. And in other cases it's tarnished to the surface and that tarnish will not come off. Or it might be like a lacquer um, from oils that have uh, really deteriorated over time and just turned to a varnish. In which case they won't come off with a solvent either. You'd have to polish them off. And that's only worth doing if there'd be some benefit in it. Um, those marks are pretty minor and I don't expect that they would impede the blades at all. Diaphragm blades typically don't need an awful lot of attention in most cameras because as long as they're reasonably clean um, so that they're not pulling themselves apart when you're trying to set the aperture because of that which is what happens if they're too oily. As long as they're reasonably clean it doesn't matter if they're a little bit gummy because when you're setting the diaphragm, setting the aperture settings, it's not a race against time. However, in a reflex camera like this, the aperture, the diaphragm is opened up to the full aperture for viewing, so that to aid in focusing. And it only sets drops to the set aperture setting. at the instant you're making the exposure and so we are concerned with time in that case because we need the blades to move quick enough to get to the set aperture before the rest of the shutter action follows on and makes the exposure a the sort of effect you would see if you've got problems might be that the diaphragm blades fail to close down quick enough when you set a fast shutter speed so that where you are using a fast shutter speed in combination with a fairly small aperture you would end up with unexpected overexposure. That would be a problem that would be more prevalent with fast modern films of course 
because in the days that these cameras were made a colour film which would probably would have been a slide film might have a speed of ISO 25 or thereabouts if it was a high speed ectochrome which would have come along a little bit later they had the blistering speed of ISO 160 or as ASA 160 in those days and so you would not be using a high shutter speed and a small aperture all at the same time these days if you've got some 800 ASA film in there you certainly would be in fact you'd be getting overexposures on a sunny day every day of the week right so there's our blades all cleaned I'm looking at the state of those and they're in very good condition not expecting any trouble from those at all and now I just need to assemble them so where's the jig here we have it so we start with that plate that's got a little rivet on it, a little post which locates it in the shutter which stops you putting it in the wrong position or at least encourages you firmly not to put it in the wrong position diaphragm blades are interleaved. The first blade is tucked under the last blade so that there is no effective start position. They're all identical. Shutter blades are typically just stacked up one on top of each other and so there is a first blade and a last blade. Diaphragms and not, they're interleaved. Amongst other things it means that they will not overlap, they cannot be closed right down like shutter blades so that they overlap. Right, they're all in place, that's all the pivots on the fixed plate. Now here's the ring that sets The diaphragm sets the aperture, that's in place, and this only goes in here into the case in one position. And I'm just looking to make sure I've got it in the right position. Where's the hole? There it is. Okay. Get this lined up. Felt that sort of click into place then, so I know it's very likely correct. I'll lift off my outer case, pop it up underneath, and we've got our three tiny screws. I'll get them started. Right, I've got them started. Now I need to check to see that nothing's become displaced. No, those blades are all moving smoothly. So that I know that those, all the pins are in their respective holes or slots. I can tighten down those three screws. and check that action again I 
and that's smooth, that's good. That would probably be adequate at that stage. But I'm going to put a little bit of graphite powder in there and work it in just to ensure that that runs very smoothly. So I'll do that and then I'll blow out the excess. It's very important if you do things like put graphite powder into the blades in the configuration like this that you are very meticulous at blowing out any loose graphite powder after the event. There should be no loose graphite powder as you close the shutter up, otherwise it will end up on the back of a lens and causing you grief. Back shortly.